see the little goblin see his little feet and his little nosy woes isn't the goblin sweet yeah. What's up guys? Something a bit less intense to get your brush around in this video. We'll be looking at how I painted this Blood Bowl Goblin referee to essentially a tabletop standard. There's a little bit of freehand to up the wow factor but it's nothing overly taxing. So we're going to start off by basing the skin with Games Workshop Lauren Forest. This is quite a flat, desaturated green, so it makes for quite a good base colour as it gives you a lot of scope for adding lights and darks. I'm painting this over a grey primer. If you're interested, I used Rust-Oleum spray primer. I like to use grey because I can see the details a little better than when I'm using white or black. Plus, the grey makes it easier to get a nice bright finish than if I'm painting over a black surface. Next we're going to make a wash by adding a little Rhinox hide into some Scrag Brown and we'll add a bit of water and a drop of Lamium Medium. This is just an easy way to make uh, washes on the fly. So we're going to wash this over the skin, letting it pool in the recesses. Now we'll use our Lauren Forest again and we'll start to pick out some of the highlights. So along the top of the ear, around the eyes. The bridge of the nose. And on the cheeks here. So basically any raised areas. To continue we'll add a bit of Flash Gets Yellow to our base colour just to up the saturation and we'll use that as our second highlight colour. So notice here that I'm drawing the paint over the surface to where I want the brightest area to be. And we're just going to hit all the same points from the last step but we'll try and cover a smaller surface area. As far as paint consistency goes here you want this to be a standard layer of consistency so just a little thinner than your base coat. Add a bit more yellow and we'll apply another highlight.
mix in some Vallejo Ivory. If you don't have this, you can use Screaming Skull as a substitute. Now for our last highlight we'll just mix in some Vallejo Ivory. Fill in the eye socket with some Rhinox Hide. And then dot the eyeball with some Vallejo Ivory or Screaming Skull. We're going to paint these red later on, so it's good to dot them first with the ivory, just so that the red is nice and clear. Add a bit of purple to your base colour and we'll paint the lip. It doesn't really matter what paint you use for this, but if you're interested, I used Games Workshop Xerus Purple. For the ears, I've mixed a bit of Orcish Dermis from scale 75 fantasy and games range into the base colour. If you don't have that, you can make a similar colour by adding a little pink to Games Workshop Kislev Flesh. So we're just going to paint that onto the lower part of the ears. Add some Vallejo Ivory to your base colour and we'll paint on some little lines in order to simulate texture on the ear. Even though we're not trying to paint this to a high level, it's still good to throw in a few little details like this just to help make it stand out. Alright, so we'll do the shirt now. I base this in scale color graphite. 
If you don't have that, you can use Games Workshop Dawnstone instead. It's basically the same colour, it just gives a slightly different finish. Now I'm using scale colour here because the matte finish gives a, a nice fabric quality which works really well next to the slightly shinier finish of the Games Workshop paints which we used for the skin. So mix in some Vallejo Ivory and we'll use that for our first highlight. Again we're just going to hit all the raised areas paying particular focus to along the top of the shirt. Add some more ivory and we'll paint on our second highlight.
For our shadows, I'm going to use Graphene Grey from Scale Color. Games Workshop Eshin Grey is a pretty decent equivalent for this. We'll just paint this into all the folds and creases and the undersides of the arms. Next we'll mix a bit of scale colour Cantabric blue into some Abyssal blue and that's going to give us a, a nice dark blue colour. You don't have to use these exact paints, just grab any dark blue you like the look of, it, it doesn't really matter. Now we're going to paint vertical lines over his shirt. Try and keep these straight and equidistant to each other. If you do make a mistake you can always fix it with some of the grey paints from your palette. For the red card, we'll start with quite a dark red by mixing some black into Mephiston red. Then we'll add some of that colour into our Mephiston red for our first highlight. Notice here that I'm adding the dark red into the bright red rather than the other way around. It's much easier doing it like this. If you do it the other way around, you'll waste quite a lot of paint trying to get it bright enough. So as always, just pull the paint up over the card to the top.
For our second highlight, we just use pure Mephiston Red. Then we'll finish off with a little edge highlight along the top with some rat skin flesh. Base the trousers using the same blue we used for the stripes on the shirt and we'll add some Vallejo ivory for our first highlight. For our second highlight, just add a bit more ivory. We'll paint this on as little stripes along the top of his trousers. Then we'll make quite a heavy glaze with that colour and glaze over the transition just to help blur it out a little. To shade them we'll make another heavyish glaze, this time with Rhinox Hide and we'll apply this underneath the trousers.
If you like, you can use the same colour to line between the edge of his trousers and his legs. Now you don't have to do this, but it does help to separate out the sections. Paint the hat and the shoes with black. Now, my camera stopped working here, so I missed painting the peak of his hat. But the process is actually pretty easy. You want to start off with scale colour abyssal blue and pull it up over the surface to where you want your highlight. Then just add some white to the blue and continue building up highlights. Now, if you don't have abyssal blue, you can get the same colour by simply adding a bit of bright blue to your black. So just use any bright blue you like. I'm doing a little glaze here to help blur out the transition, which is going to give you a smoother blend. For the gold parts we'll take some peanut butter from the Fantasy and Games range and we'll mix it with a bit of scale colour red leather. Peanut butter is almost identical to the old classic snake bite leather from Games Workshop. The purple you use doesn't really matter too much, just pick one you like the look of. Once you've based the area with this brown mix, add some more peanut butter and we'll apply it as your first highlight. For the second highlight, we'll just use peanut butter on its own. Next, we'll add a decent amount of fully whole ivory to lighten it.
and then we'll add some more ivory to the mix and we'll apply this as our final highlight. For the money bag we'll go for a nice and simple worn leather look. So we'll start off by mixing equal parts of scale colour black leather and brown leather. Mixing some Rhinox hide into Dryad bark will give you the same kind of colour. So just go ahead and apply this as your base coat. Mix in some orange to lighten it. I'm using Mars Orange from Skill Color, but Games Workshop Rat Skin Flesh will give you a very similar effect. Simply paint this onto the raised areas and pull the pigment up to the top of the bag. Add a little more orange and we'll highlight again, this time hitting a smaller surface area. Mix in some Vallejo Ivory and we'll do some edge highlights. I'm just hitting the little creases here. It's also good to add a few little dots here and there just to make it look more textured. For our final highlight we'll add a bit more ivory and we'll use this to intensify our edge highlights. We're going to add some freehand now, so we're going to start off by painting an S shape. I'm just using black paint for this. Now this is going to be a dollar sign, so you want to make this a bit thicker in order to make the next step easier. Alright, so now that we have our S shape, I'll just paint on two thin vertical stripes through the center of the S, like so. Now we'll simply paint Ref onto the little scroll on his back here. When I'm doing lettering, I like to break each letter up into smaller shapes. So for the R, it's a vertical line, then a little curved section, followed by another diagonal line. And we'll use the same approach for the other two letters. Alright, so that's basically the model finished now. 
we're just going to have to do the base. So we'll blob on some PVA glue and use an old brush to smooth it out over the base. This sand I'm using is a mix of various different grades, with a few bits of ripped cork to simulate larger stones. You can see that I just pour it onto the glue and then tap off the excess. I usually pull off most of this cork and then just leave the ones that I like the look of. So once that dried, I painted it with Games Workshop Steel Legion Drab. Then I dry brush the surface with Raka Flesh. After that I washed with Agrax Earthshade. Now I find that applying the wash after dry brushing is actually much faster than the standard method, plus it gives you quite a nice effect. Now we'll just paint the rim black. Dab some glue randomly over the surface. And then dump some static grass on top. Tap off the excess and you're all done. Alright, thanks for watching guys, I hope this was useful, don't forget to like and share the video, subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you all next time. Thanks again, bye for now.